Small island states like Trinidad and Tobago have unique challenges when it comes to global warming and climate change. In tonight's Keeping It Green, we explore these and how they are being addressed with one University of Trinidad and Tobago lecturer who's eager to share what he learned after attending the Carbon Capture and Storage, the CCS, summer school hosted by the International Energy Agency Greenhouse Gas Research and Development Program. Rediscover Flow at discoverflow.co. Flow, inspired by you. We contribute about 0.1% of, of, of the emissions globally. But in terms of our impact of climate change, we are a small island developing state. So when you look at equity in terms of climate justice, we are severely impacted by climate change. Assistant Professor Dr. Dylan Ramsuk highlighting that although climate change concerns affect everyone, its causes and effects are unevenly spread. If we take the journey of climate change in Trinidad and Tobago, anecdotally, you walk down the road, you feel a bit hotter than what the past 10 years or 20 years have been. According to the TT Meteorological Service, the temperature has been increasing. The, uh, the, according to the Paris Agreement, all the activities globally, and I'll start globally, have been induced to reduce emissions, um, reduce temperatures by 1.5 degrees Celsius by the year 2100. Trinidad and Tobago is on track to blow past this global average within a few years, according to the trend. This is where the need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and therefore carbon capture and storage comes in. But what is it? It is a combination of technologies that capture carbon dioxide at its source and stores it deep underground, preventing its release into the atmosphere. There are several ways to do this. You may be aware of things like direct air capture, bioenergy CCS, or bioenergy carbon capture and storage, or carbon capture and utilization. Those are the three main general um, carbon capture um, applications and technologies out there. Direct air capture is taking the CO2 straight from the air and removing it and, and either injecting it permanently in some storage or utilizing it for, for some other downstream product. Bioenergy uses uh, agricultural waste, municipal solid waste, uh, whatever carbon-based waste that we use and using it to generate electricity or some form of electricity and also capturing that CO2 and storing it. Dr. Ramsuk says the third application appears ideal for this country. We are in a, a very unique situation in Trinidad and Tobago, whereby we have a small population, yet we generate a lot of CO2 emissions. The studies and inventories that we've worked on show that our emissions in Trinidad and Tobago are relatively high because of our industrialization. He says through CCS or CCUS, we can address lower production of oil, enhance oil recovery itself, and the third main aspect of it is addressing the climate issue of reducing our CO2 emissions. Using this CO2 that is otherwise would, would have been emitted to the atmosphere directly, we can then have some sort of industrial ecology, whereby our petrochemical sector, whether it be LNG, ammonia, methanol, cooperates with our oil operator, whether it be Heritage or some other oil operator, and use this CO2 to either permanently store it or enhance the oil recovery of Trinidad and Tobago, thereby providing a win-win solution. And speaking specifically to CCS, provide a bridge to, to, to the gap that is happening, whereby we don't have to transition fully to a renewable energy source, not necessarily, whereby we could still use the, the fossil fuels that we have, make it more sustainable, reduce the carbon emissions, while we explore alternatives to renewable energy. So will we ever reach net zero? This CCS steering committee has now been tasked with the implementation and realization of CCS in the country itself. In terms of exploration, the, the Recently, the collaboration between UE and UTT, we've had a first major win, win whereby where Trinidad and Tobago has been the first in the world, I believe, where we secured Green Climate Fund funding for a carbon capture and storage project of that nature. He notes that this is a major milestone in that our local capacity and investment put in to advance carbon capture and storage have been recognized. The next steps and based on our learnings here and what we could have possibly apply, because the learnings that we've seen in Australia come from a practical standpoint. We've learned and seen what milestones and hurdles these companies have experienced in their 60-year journey of CCS. 
what we've, what we've now, and we've also built relationships with these, these companies as well as these international bodies to help them assist in this steering committee as well as our independent research. What next we look for is developing scientific based solutions and look at, looking at what scientific studies are needed to then inform the technical and economic actions that these companies should take. And while these measures are being taken to steady the course to reducing the carbon footprint, we are reminded that we will only achieve net zero if everyone from individuals to governments get involved. I am Stacey Ann Providence, keeping it green for TDT News. Discover Flow at discoverflow.co. Flow, inspired by you. Get extra credit for back to school with Flow. Save $1,300 for a year when you sign up, switch, or upgrade to an everything you need plan. Plus, get $500 cash back. Terms and conditions apply. Offer ends September 30th. Visit us online or in store for details. Flow, inspired by you.